I paid my legendary 15 and the shit ain't even there. Okay, so hello, hi everyone, Dirt Queens and the like. It's me back again to make another video on Quadir. And this time we have a Quadir Howard Patreon review. So I became a Patreon this month because why not? I can afford it and I wanted to see what it was like for myself. There's a lot of talk about it, what's there, what's not, and I think that people need an honest review. So, that's what I'm here to do today. Patreon is where he gets a bulk of his income. I think he has like 100 to 150 girls on there. So I think it's worth talking about. So, let's get into it. So, my initial thoughts with the Patreon, I was kind of excited initially. I'd heard some not so great things, but it was just like... The thought of having some exclusive Quidditch content was just like exciting to me. So I went in with a good mind, like an open mind, and I was just I went in positive. Um, he has different tiers to it, so I went with the fifteen dollar tier because I just wanted everything. And like I say, I was truly excited. I did not go into this with a bad mind, with malicious intent. I just wanted more content, you know, from Quidditch. So at, at first, I, <laughs> I have to be honest, I found it a bit of a mess to navigate because there's just so many categories and the names just don't really indicate what you're getting so you have to like explore the different plates to find out what they're actually made of <laughs> no, what's actually in there the categories aren't like he doesn't commit to them and they're not they're not always clear from how they're titled what exactly they are so that was like made it a bit of a mess for me to navigate at first and that was kind of the first thing I noticed. But I also noticed the inconsistency in posts. I joined at the top of April. And honestly, since I joined, there have been no new posts since the 25th of February. Which means he didn't post all of March. He hasn't posted in April. He probably won't post for the whole of April. Which means Patreons are paying monthly for like nothing. They're paying every month and not getting new content. And, and I'd heard stuff like that. People say, like, he doesn't post, but to see it for myself was crazy. And it's like, yeah, it's true. Like, he really is not consistent over that. You know, I want to talk about some of the stuff he does have on there, some of the different segments, and just say, like, the good, the bad, what I think, before giving an overall review. I want to start with Cooking in Q's Kitchen, uh, formerly known as Cooking with Q. This was his cooking show. And unfortunately, there's only three episodes that he filmed with the LPA in 2021 and nothing since then and I say unfortunately because I actually liked it um, he did a bunch of old episodes in his old apartment but they were all privated for some reason I'd say the pacing of Cooking with Q is a bit slower than I'd like but it's so wholesome, like it's so sweet it shows like the nice side of Q which I, I wish we saw more often these days it also made me realise just how useful the LPA was, even if Cude won't admit it. Now, can you imagine doing all this when it's one person? That's not the work. It, you know what I'm saying? You gotta make sure the food ain't burning. Yeah. You gotta make sure you... Yeah. Foo, 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 yeah. But moving shit around. So, what a God said, y'all. That's what I'm saying. Please, y'all, give it up for my, my right hand. I know y'all don't see him, but please give him a, a round of applause. <laughs> Seriously, because I'm telling y'all now, the only reason why this show is coming back is because... I can do it this way. And then I can do it in a way with my hands, where I don't have to be stressed out. We're eating, food is a beautiful thing. We're not supposed to be stressing out about food. I would say some of the recipes were, I, I, I wanna say like American, like they were a lot like to see the mixing of like the sweet with the savory, like he, he made like a savory beef patty melt, you know, with cheese and like stuff and then he, he chopped bananas and strawberries over it and then he drizzled syrup over it and then he sprinkled sugar over it. Truly, I was shocked. I was shocked, honey. Like, nearly leaks, I was shocked. And like, obviously, you know, like, I'm no rabbit. Like, I like my comfort food, but it was a lot even for me to see. <laughs> I would still try it. I'd still try the recipe. I mean, I tried sloppy bags, you know. So that's Cooking with Q. Next, I want to talk about a plate he had called the table read is uh, it's another plate he had but un uh, unfortunately has n he stopped around 2020 and there haven't been any episodes so these were like sit down vlogs which started as like motivational stuff so he just like you know he just like I don't know just tell you you can do it that kind of thing 
But then it also became him talking about updates in his life, and then it also became story times, and then it also just kind of became a spaced event. It just ended up being like a mixed bag of whatever Q wanted to sit down and talk about at the time. So yeah, the motivational stuff was kind of the core of it. It was a bit preachy, but sometimes he would make points and I'd be like, okay, you know, I'd be snapping my fingers. The stuff when he was ranting was like skippable to me, as well as some of the videos where he he just was so high and he wasn't making any sense to me. Some of them were a bit skippable for me. Some of them also were like the conspiracy, like the Jesus, that like, oh, Jesus, the crucifying him was a mistake and you know maybe there's meant to be another Jesus and then alluding that he was Jesus it's crazy to think that he was kind of thinking like that as far back as 2020 because I he didn't start talking about that publicly until like a year ago so <laughs> so there's a lot of throwaway videos but there's a lot of like good videos in these as well because there's like a lot of tea spilled he opened up about stuff about the label Barnhouse um he opened up about what his plans were at the time Stuff like, like, just lots of tea, behind the scenes tea that, like, if you weren't a Patreon, you wouldn't know. Like, for me, I didn't know that Bloody Dinner Mess was not meant to be, like, have a music vid video. It wasn't meant to be the next up. But it was, like, something that the label pushed for and he wasn't, like, initially happy with that. You know, he also talks about his mum's sickness. He talks about putting down Tamaya, the whole dead to me, like, is you crew beef and stuff that was happening around that time. And stuff about his ex when they were actually, like, together. So there's tea there. I'd say it's good for that. There's some story times that he says, and, and I'd say they're a bit drawn out. No shade, but I don't know. That, like, it's good. Like, a Quidditch story time, if he's on, is always good. Like, that's what we, we kind of initially loved him for. You know, but to me, the story times show how he keeps bad company at least from the way he tells the story and it just shows that he doesn't always make the best decisions with friends and stuff like i said in my first video about him a handful of these reads from 2016 are privated but there's about 50 ish available reads so there's a good amount of the table read so next i want to talk about a plate he had called in q let's talk about in q which are his patreon exclusive live streams which these days are just re-uploads of unlisted lives from YouTube. So if you're not a Patreon, you're not missing out on much these days. Because any subscriber can get those if they just save them. You know, or, or just watch them on bootlegs or something. <laughs> the older ones were re-uploaded onto his Brand Dork channel from somewhere else. Maybe Twitch, I'm not sure. But he also live streams on Crowdcast. But I, I kept having issues trying to get into it. Like, I could get into it, but then it would give me a playlist of stuff I wasn't. Like, I, I can never get to the specific live I was looking for, so I just gave up on that. It's kind of take or miss with Quidditch lives. You know what it gives. It's, mm, you know, nothing spectacular. But I will say some of the ones from a few years ago, in some of them, he does spill tea on the LPA. And I have reason to believe that he may have really had a crush on the LPA. That's a good hundred so of these lives, but 34 of them are privated. But overall, I'll say they're a little bit boring. <laughs> so now let's talk about gameplays. So in the past, I've said that I don't love Q's gameplays, but it's mainly the killing games that I don't love. So there's, there's a video on Bootlegs' channel where he's playing Crash Bandicoot, Quidditch, and honestly, I wish he'd do more racing games because it's so fun to watch. If he played these more, he'd become good. And and I just I don't I think that could be a staple, just like all the other games he plays. Because he wasn't that good in that. He was good against the computer, but he kept coming in last when he played against the actual people. Even so, it's still fun to watch because he'd like curse out the winners and stuff. Ooh, I do. They cheated me. I'm I mean, who's gonna say a parent argue the fact that these hoes are a bunch of cheating flagrant motherfucking heathens? Y'all know oh girl, look at her. I saw you in the grocery store up here acting like your motherfucking Emily Post with your wick and your food stamps. Bitch, you ain't gonna sit up here and act like you sitting over nobody and your man ain't nothing but a motherfucking can of spam. Get to the cash. Let's get to the cash. Where's my remote? Where's my remote? Oh my God. Are you serious? Are you motherfucking kidding me? Oh, excuse me, sweetheart, excuse me, sweetie. Oh my god. 
Oh my motherfucking goodness. And it would be good to see him get good. As for Sims, he doesn't see, seem to know what he's doing in that game. So while it's fun to hear his commentary and stuff, it gets a bit boring because he doesn't seem to know how to have his make his characters have a good life. And when the game updates, he seems to be like starting from scratch. He seems completely lost. I don't see him really have a true, true mastery and command of the game to where it can truly be interesting. And I don't think that's just Sims. I think most of the games he plays, he doesn't really know what he's doing. Like maybe a little, but again, there's no game where he seems to have like a good command of it. So with the gameplays, because of that, for me, it's take it or leave it. Um, so now on to the code, which is his Patreon exclusive podcast, which he uploads from SoundCloud, where he talks about pop culture stuff, celebs, politicians. It's not bad at all. Like I enjoy it, and I think it's very good to have on in the background while while I like work on other stuff. I'll say in the older ones, he's a bit sharp, a bit more witty, more on it than these days. And I think that may be because he's high more, high more often these days, but also because he's less interested in celebrities and, and politicians and stuff. In the latest one, he kind of alluded to being like over celebs altogether and just wanting to talk about himself, which is like, you know, what's there to talk about? You know, I think that would ruin it if he completely made that switch. In, a, in some of the episodes, I have to say, he is ranting about everything and nothing at all. Um, but when he does focus and actually talk on the, whatever celebrity thing is going on, it's really good. Um, that being said, I wish some of the episodes had actual worded titles instead of just being the code episode 20 or the code episode 34, you know. I wish more of them had titles like that of like words, you know, so you can like, or sentences so you could identify them more easily. Because there's like 50 episodes and if you have one you like, it's hard to go back to because you don't know if it was episode 49 or, or 38, you know. Also there's these like random sound effects that like <laughs> pop up throughout the, the podcast that I don't really think fit. They're not really necessary and they're kind of random. Those are the segments that I wanted to talk about in like a bit more detail. But now I want to talk about the miscellaneous stuff which is everything else. So Q has a lot of other stuff going on in Patreon, but there's no real commitment to any of those things. So for example, there's the movie nights, there's the calming sound with Q, which is the ASMR thing, the dance parties, the dining with Q, etc. There's more stuff. Half of these things don't even have five episodes to them. So if you're coming to Patreon for the dance parties, even though that's kind of done, he kind of does that in his live streams anyway, but there's only four dance parties. So it's like, you know, and, and I think that's what Q gives in general. Like he tries a lot of things, but he doesn't commit really. And that's why none of it is that good. So now the moment we've all been waiting for, I really think it's so important to talk about this. I want to talk about the classic vids and the classic like lives and stuff that he said he was going to upload to Patreon for the Patreons to see that he took away from the general public. Okay. This was meant to be the main attraction to incentivize new Patreons. The business model he's been screaming about. All of my content from 2006 to 2021 is on Patreon. So if you want to watch all those classics, uh, girl, I can't even think of all the names. For years, eons, you know, the access to all his old videos, to be able to see them, you know, for his Patreons, the business model, blah, blah, blah. That, oh my God. Basically, oh my God, I don't want to get angry, but basically they're not there. The classic live streams, the classic videos from, you know, back in the day, the 2000s, you know, the 600 videos he unlisted are not on Patreon. But how much he's gone on about, this is my business model, this is where they are, this is going to make me money, blah, blah, blah. But how much he's promised and like built up the past two years, built up his Patreon and his whole direction as being they are on there and them not being there. Again, they are not there. So I've seen it for myself, they really aren't there and they have not been there for years. Like, so so let me tell you what, what you know what I gather from what is on there. So it seems he started uploading them in late 2020 and then in February of 2021 
he created a playlist that was meant to have the entire collection and even back then people were saying the vids were unavailable so they've been unavailable since 2021 he only just in february of this year tried to make another playlist of the old vids to rectify the situation but guess what the patrons are still saying it's unaccessible so it's been two years of no vids he's tried to sort it out still nothing he's saying he'll figure it out but it's been two months no two years really it's been months and nothing for me it's not that hard to make a playlist it wouldn't take a day to just unlist these you know unprivate these videos for me, it just shows that he, he's not bothered. You're not bothered, could you? You could have gotten Will to do it when he was there. You, like, it's not a hard thing. It doesn't cost money. It won't take forever. So that's why these re-upload channels continue to sit over the top of you. This is why we don't even take you seriously. Because you don't even try for your Patreon, girls. Like, the main draw, the main attraction is not there. I paid my legendary 15! And the shit ain't even there! So now that leads me to my final thoughts. Okay, and I just, just bullet point, we'll just go through them. So the content makes good background noise, but I just don't know if it's worth $15, especially with the inconsistency. Oh, I could go a few weeks to a month without posting on YouTube, but girl, on Patreon, you're getting new material all the time around the clock. When Patreons have issues, he does not deal with them well. He doesn't deal with it while he rants about them. Personally, I think the patrons are just there to support him. Just so that he can like put food on the table, just so the lights don't go out. You know what I mean? I don't think they're there because he's providing this great value on there. Um, the content is kind of a hit or miss. And lots of the older stuff is like privated or deleted. And there's not much by way of newer stuff. You know, and, and none of the classics are there. <sighs> there's maybe 150 videos on there plus the Crabcast and SoundCloud stuff, but the quality is also very inconsistent. Overall, and I'm being nice, I would give it three stars maybe, out of five, three stars. It doesn't seem to be something he really cares about at this point, and there's just so little variety in these days, and even when there was variety, there wasn't a lot within the variety. Somehow he still feels entitled to coin even when he's not posting. It's very repetitive. A lot of the stuff he says in his public live streams are also the same stuff he talks about here. Ranting, conspiracy theories, pontificating about being the new Jesus, ranting about this person, Beyonce, Jaguar Wright, whoever. You know, at this point, unless you want the old tea, there's not much different on there. Except maybe gameplays, but even those are streamed live these days. Like, you can even get your hands on those without being a Patreon. I would say the vibe on Patreon is a bit nicer. It's nice to see what he's like when he's not begging for money. But the nerve to blame classics and bootlegs for ruining his business plan when he's the one not unprivating his vids is crazy to me. I think the patrons should, like, boycott his Patreon until he sorts it out. Or, or nothing will probably change. And I think Q should sort it out, take it upon himself. I also want Q to, like, go out a bit more and just create some memories so he can give the girls some story times, at least the Patreon girls. Because in the old story times, he always seemed to be like overextending himself and falling out with friends who were trying to shade him, like like becoming friends with people who were trying to take advantage of him, that kind of thing. I, again, from the way he told it. So it would be cool for him to like get a new batch of story times where he could show some growth, you know, some boundaries. Do the show with more, more peaches if you can. Go out with friends, something like that. I would like to see that. Because it's not, I mean, when you're at home, it's not like you're making content for the for, for anyone, so, you know. <laughs> so, I'll say, overall, with his Patreon, it's so sad. There's just a lack of drive, you know, to make it great. So, it's just kind of mid. It's just kind of okay. Uh, as for me, personally, I'm done with Patreon. After this month, I will not be renewing. I'll just be cancelling it. Um, after seeing what it gives, it just is not worth it. But let me know what you think. Do you think it's worth $15? Have you ever been a Patreon? Would you become one? You know, let me know what you think of this vid as well. And thank you for watching. And remember, you are not wrong for being a dark queen. You are not wrong for kissing Quidditch's ass. You are so not wrong for standing in your truth. So thank you. And I will see you. Have a great day. So that's what it is. Like, I just feel like I am so grateful and so appreciative. And you all mean the world to me. 
this whole platform has changed my life. And I just feel like I'm thankful, I'm appreciative, and I, I look forward to seeing where it goes. And I'm going to hustle to get 1,000 patrons. I am. I'm going to hustle 